it's never been easy for this franchise, it's never been easy for this organization. So for me, it's all about the challenge of building the right habits, you know, trying to get this, this team and this, this organization back on track. I feel like the reward and the benefit of it all is, is greater than anything I could ask for. Three years, $63 million. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How'd that feel? Amazing. <laughs> take, take me through the process of that. So uh, mm -hmm. does your agent call you? Like, do you visit teams? Like, I don't think people understand how the process of free agency goes. Yeah, you know, the meeting really wasn't so much as far as like numbers as more as it was about the opportunity of me going there, how I fit, and uh, you know, what I, what I could accomplish there. From a basketball standpoint, it was no culture that was starving more to win than I felt like the Knicks were. So for me, from a basketball standpoint, it, it was a no-brainer. How are you handling that New York media? Uh, it's, it's, it's great, man. People talk about it all the time, but it reminds me so much of being in LA. Like, it's just hot and cold. Like, you can be the, the best player, you can be the worst player. And uh, for me, I don't, I don't read any of it. Like, you don't, don't read anything? You just head down? Head down. I said, I, I've had the experience of being in LA, so I know how that stuff can cloud your vision. How was that transition from LA to a smaller market? In New Orleans, it was, it was great, man. Honestly, I had fun. It was, uh, it was a smaller market, but I had fun. And the, and the people in the city, like, they're, they're amazing. Was that your favorite time playing in the league thus far? Yeah, that was definitely the most fun I've had. You know, I was able to, you know, just be free, just go out there and play and have fun. Does basketball still bring that joy out of you all the time? Like, it, we're being frank with each other. It's a, it's a different situation here in New York, right? Like, obviously, expectations it hasn't gone as you guys expected, but, like, do you still find that happy place sometimes on the court, even though you're dealing with all that? Absolutely. I think you have to. Um... I think my early years of being in LA, it wasn't always pretty. We developed, we got better, but it wasn't, you know, the perfect situation, I guess you can say, as far as, you know, winning. And I think it's prepared me for this situation here in New York uh, to have patience and uh, overall have perspective of things. Obviously, this show was about business and doing more and using your platform to leverage, but it is about ball for you. And yeah. that's like, that's okay too. Yeah, that's definitely okay. And I think it's, it's great to want more, and uh, I want more than just basketball, but um, I think you also gotta you know, have priorities, and uh, for me, it's knowing what got me here, um, and that's obviously gonna be my main and central focus, and then everything else, that's what you have a great team around you for. How'd you compile this team? Because one of the concerns I see a lot of guys had, I had it a little bit too, I only trust the people that are really close to me. All of a sudden you have all these people that are coming in. I'm an accountant, I'm a financial advisor, I'm a manager, I'm an agent. How'd you, what was that process like for you, picking your team? For me it was tough, cause um, I came in and I kinda, I would say I trusted too much. So I would say my first couple months um, in the NBA, my rookie, I got rid of everybody. And I, You cleaned I, house? Cleaned house. Why? Um, just some things that had went on that I really, you know, didn't really um, agree with. If I'm hiring somebody or if I'm paying somebody, it should be somebody that I should trust or somebody that I pick on my own, not because somebody told me to. So you compiled a whole new team. Mm -hmm. What was the interview process like? I feel like uh, when I broke my leg my rookie year, it was kind of like the best and the worst thing that happened to me. Worst because I couldn't play basketball, but best because I, I really got to sit and observe and ask questions. And I mean, I had one of the best players to ever play the game and Kobe. So he was a, a soundboard that I can go talk to, um, ask questions. And for me, the process was just interviewing different people, um, doing my research on my own, seeing what you know this guy has done for this guy or uh, what this agent has done for this person. And for me, it was, uh, it was a no-brainer. Like, once I met with CAA, it was, easy. it was an easy choice for me. I know Aaron has done a lot of contracts. Mm -hmm. He's one of the biggest agents there is out there. What made it click with him? Him being with a big client like PG was um, definitely a, a plus. And Aaron was with me as far as, you know, the, the goals that I had set for myself. He was locked into the, to the player and the person that I wanted to be. Bring me back to your AAU days, man. You played for a guy, Mr. Trout, yeah. who was a billionaire of Excel Communications, right? Yeah. I love when I read, I'm like, whoa, Julius <laughs> is going to AU games on PJs yeah, and he's yeah. staying at five star hotels. Like, yeah. that had, but I never had that. That had to ultimately give you a vision about what kind of life you wanted if Absolutely. somebody's schooling you on that. Yeah, man, it gave me a perspective. You know, I kind of got to see the best of both worlds. Um, 
as far as, you know, seeing my mom's work ethic and her, and her trying to, you know, provide for me and my sister on her own. But then also, you know, getting to go to Mr. Charles' house and, and, and getting to ride and, uh, around and, and private jets and stuff, like you said. So, I mean, that part was obviously fun about it. But uh, for me, I think the biggest thing I took away is, is how hard, you know, this guy works and how much he cared about us as, as individuals. I still talk to him to this day. When I meet Fortune 100 owners or companies, they want to do what we do, mm. and then we always want to end up <laughs> doing what they do. Yeah. Did he give you any advice about you know, how to handle your business as you kind of continue to blossom? Yeah, he always would say to me, it's not about how much you make, it's how much you save. Hmm. Um, my mom would joke with me because I will always, any cash I got, I'll always save. I go to see my grandmother, she would always give us like coins or whatever. And then where did you put it? <laughs> I put it in the shoebox under the bed, and then it got to a point where I was saving so much money. My mom went and saw him. She was like, boy, like, where'd you get all this money from? I was like, Mom, I've been saving it. She's like, been saving it. She's like, that's your money. What you saving it for? I'm like, you never know, like for like a rainy day. I was I had, I mean, single parent home. I had to be the man of the house at a very young age. So um, for me, it was always about helping my mom. So take me through your first couple of years. Mm. I've never seen that much money in my life, mm. I get drafted. Um, I will admit that I splurged a couple of times. Mm. But did Absolutely. You, <laughs> everybody yeah. goes through it Absolutely. to a certain degree, right? Because yeah. you got it, you never had it you before. To, yeah. But do you, did you guys build out some kind of budget? Did you go through any process of like, this is what I want to do with my money, this is how I want to spend it? For me, it was, like you said, you, you go through your, your phase of where you want to splurge, you get the car that you want, you know, you get the clothes or the, whatever it is that you want. And you, you, you go through that phase of learning. but. For me, early on, it was about saving. It wasn't even necessarily uh, about investing in high-risk things. It was about investing in stuff that you were gonna make something off of it. I got a question for you as it relates to being a dad. So obviously, you had humble beginnings, and you end up getting to where you're at now. Uh, one of the things I always see people try to handle is how do you keep your family or your kid with those same humble beginnings mm -hmm. that you have, but obviously you're living a different lifestyle. I mean, honestly, it's, it's he's not going to have the same upbringing that I had growing up as a kid. It's just impossible. Uh, but for me, I try to give him perspective on, on work ethic. You going to be a hooper? Uh, he already is. You know, when I get home later today, he's going to come upstairs and be like, Dad, you want to play basketball with me? And I'm going to be like, yeah, we're going to play for a couple, couple hours, and then he's going to call it a night. But is he, tell me he's wearing number 30. He's wearing number 30. Shoot it. Shoot it. He's wearing number 30. He's right-handed. He's not left-handed. <laughs> What's 30 mean to you? 30, that was uh, my mom's number. Uh, she played college basketball. And uh, one day when I was a kid, I didn't have any number. I just wore whatever number, you know, they gave you. I, I went up to her one day and I was like, Mom, what number did you wear in college? And she, was, uh, she said she was number 30. And I was like, can I wear it? And she was like, only if you do something with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, from that point on, I think I was like 10 years old, I've been wearing that number. How about your relationship with Cal? That's my guy right there, man. He taught me so many life lessons uh, besides like basketball. But I can tell you one of the things that he taught me the most is uh, just taking responsibility for your actions. A lot of times, especially in like our younger generation, we like to point the finger a lot. Um, you know, all oh, this didn't go this way because of this or whatever. We don't really look ourselves in the mirror. Things may not go how you want it to go, but what can I do? Uh, what is my responsibility in this and how can I make it better? That's kind of the perspective I have coming into this team. Like, you know, um, things may not be great right away, but what type of habits are you building? My competitive nature is not going to change. You know, my goal, my goal is the same goal that I had since I was a little kid. You know, that I made the promise to myself and be the best player that I can possibly be. That's the thing that people don't understand. Like, you get the contract or whatever it is that you want, but for me, it's, it's still about, you know, the game, the love of the game. That's awesome. I know there's a, this is a tough city to be in, but I, I feel like your whole narrative makes you right for it. Absolutely. It's never been easy for this franchise. It's never been easy for this organization. So for me, it's all about the challenge of building the right habits, trying to get this, this team and this, this organization back on track. And, uh, I feel like the reward and the benefit of it all is, is greater than anything I could ask for. Respect, man. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, Jay.